guys, welcome to Sign with Miss I. Today we're going to be discussing scientific tools. Don't forget, if you haven't already, to like and subscribe so you'll always be notified when I post more videos. One of the first things you'll need to remember when you're measuring is to always use the metric system. The metric system is a universal system that's used all around the world. This is called the metric staircase. And as you can see, as you're going down the staircase, you are getting smaller. So those numbers are decreasing. And they are decreasing by 10. So the metric system is based on units of 10. So looking at this metric staircase, you can see on each stair step, there is a word. These are prefixes. So you have kilo, hecto, deca, base, deci, centi, and milli. Now, all of these prefixes will go in front of one of those base words. So if you look at base, you see liters, meters, and grams. So we could say kiloliter, kilometer, kilogram, hectoliter, hectometer, hectogram, and so on. And these are the units that you're going to use in place of the standard units. Some examples of standard units are things like inches, feet, and miles. We're not going to use those in science. We're only going to stick to these metric measurements, um, as you can see with the metric staircase. So what are liters, meters, and grams? And how do we measure them? Meters measure length, width, height, and even distance. And we're going to measure all of these using a meter stick or the metric end of a ruler. Liters are units that are used to measure the volume of a liquid. When measuring the volume of a liquid, you can use beakers, flasks, graduated cylinders, burettes, or pipettes. The ones we're going to focus on in this video are beakers, Erlenmeyer flasks, and graduated cylinders. Beakers and Erlenmeyer flasks, they can be plastic, metal, or glass, and they can be used to measure the volume of a liquid. However, they are best used to hold or transport those liquids. When measuring volume using the graduated cylinder, there are a few things that you need to remember. First of all, graduated cylinders tend to be a lot more accurate at measuring volume than Erlenmeyer flasks or beakers. You also need to make sure you get down at eye level in order to read all of these um, tools so far. In the graduated cylinder in particular, you're going to notice that the water looks like it curves at the bottom. This is due to the shape of the cylinder. And so the bottom of that curve is where you are going to read in order to get your volume. The bottom of that curve is called the meniscus. So you're going to read at the bottom of that meniscus. Milliliters are the most common units used to measure the volume of a liquid when measuring with a beaker, Erlenmeyer flask, or graduated cylinder. Now grams, abbreviated with a G, are the units that are used when measuring the mass of an object. Mass is the amount of matter inside of an object. And so what tool is used to measure mass? A triple beam balance scale or electronic scale can be both be used to measure mass. Make sure before you place the object on the triple beam balance scale that it is set to zero. Then after you set the object on the scale, then you can start to actually measure the mass of that object. It's very important to take note of the fact that mass and weight, even though they're often used interchangeably, are not the same thing. Weight is the measure of the force of gravity that's placed on an object, whereas mass is basically what that object is made up of, how much is inside of that object. Now they do kind of depend on each other. Um, and again, you will see them used interchangeably a lot, but they are not scientifically the same. Since weight is the measure of the force of gravity on an object, then it's going to be measured using the units Newtons, which were named after Sir Isaac Newton, who discovered the existence of gravity. 
Now weight can be measured using a regular electronic scale or even a spring scale. Microscopes are commonly used tools in the scientific laboratory because they allow you to see objects that are way too small for your naked eye to be able to see. Some things such as cells can often be seen underneath microscopes. Test tubes are commonly used in a scientific laboratory as well. They are usually used to hold liquids or even chemicals for scientists to be able to study. Thermometers are another scientific tool that are used. Thermometers are used to measure how quickly the particles or atoms are moving inside of substances. There are three commonly used temperature scales that you need to know, one of which you're probably all already familiar with, which is Fahrenheit. That is the standard temperature scale where freezing point is 32 and the boiling point is 212. The Celsius scale has a freezing point of zero degrees and a boiling point of 100. So as you can see, there's exactly 100 degrees in between freezing and boiling. Now one that you've probably not heard of is called Kelvin. One big difference between Kelvin and Celsius and Fahrenheit is that Kelvin doesn't have negative numbers and it also does not use the degree symbol. So for the freezing point in Kelvin, we'd say 273.15 Kelvin, or you can round that just to 273 Kelvin. And then the boiling point of Kelvin is going to be 373 Kelvin. The coldest possible temperature that is believed to exist is called zero Kelvin, or more commonly known as absolute zero. This is the point at which scientists believe that particles or atoms will stop moving completely. Now we have not reached that temperature in a laboratory setting yet, but scientists have gotten very close to that. Okay guys, now it is quiz time to see how you will do on the various scientific tools that you have seen here today. You're going to see either a picture or a question. You'll have a countdown to answer it, and then you're going to see the response. So, good luck! If you have any questions or any 
um, ideas for videos if you'd like to see in the future please leave them in the comments below and I really appreciate everyone watching today and I hope you stay tuned for more and as always thank you for watching Sigh with Miss I.